Hello, and welcome to RoboBench Applications in Engineering. I'm Aaron, and today we're going to be talking about robotic lift mechanisms. Lifting something is a common task in many engineering challenges and robotics competitions. Whether it's lifting something up high into a goal, or whether it's just simply picking something up and moving it to a new location, how your robot lifts that object often determines how successful you'll be in that challenge or competition. So before we look at some robot examples, let's talk about a few things to consider. First, consider the goal of the challenge or competition. How heavy is the objects that need to be lifted? What is their size? How high does that object need to be placed as it's lifted? How are you going to grab a hold of that object from the front, from the top? And then as you lift that object, does the object need to stay upright like a glass of water would so it doesn't spill? And then finally, as you're placing that object, does it have to be placed in a certain position? Does it have to be stacked? So those are some things to consider about the goal of the challenge or competition. Next, consider the parts that you have to build your lifting mechanism. There are several Tetrix Max components that make building lifting mechanisms easier. So let's look at some examples. This first robot example has a rotating lever arm that's driven by a standard servo. As that servo rotates back, the lever arm lifts up. A standard Tetrix Max servo has a torque rating of 84 ounce inches of weight. Well, that means that one inch away from the center of rotation of the servo, it can lift 84 ounces of weight. That's over five pounds, that's quite a lot. However, as that distance increases away from the center of rotation, the amount of weight the servo can lift decreases. So at two inches, for example, it can only lift 42 ounces of weight. Here's a graph that shows you the relationship between the length of the lever arm and the amount of weight the servo can lift. So you can see that as the lever arm length increases along the x-axis, the amount of weight the servo can lift decreases along the y-axis. So the longer your lever arm, the less weight you can lift. Think of it this way. Your shoulders are like the servo that does the lifting, and your arms are like the lever arm. When your arms are in close to your body, your shoulders can lift a lot more weight than when they are outstretched away from your body. There are a couple of ways to increase the torque on your lever arm. This robot has two servos that are working in unison together, doubling the amount of torque on the lever arm. It also uses a two to one gear train that amplifies the amount of torque, allowing us to lift more weight. One thing to keep in mind when using lever arms is that you're not only lifting the weight of the object, you're also lifting the weight of the arm itself. So the longer the arm, the more weight you're lifting. So remember to keep your lever arms as light as possible based on how high you have to lift an object. And then you can always use a counterbalance that negates some of the weight of the arm itself. The downside to using lever arms is that as you pick up an object, the object rotates with the lever arm around the pivot. As this robot picks up the spool, notice how the spool tilts and rotates with the arm. If you need your object to stay in an upright position or set on a certain side or stacked, then a lever arm might not be the best way to go. One way to overcome this problem of rotation is to use a parallel linkage. Parallel linkages consist of boom arms that are parallel to each other that are connected by linkages at the ends. As you lift an object, the object stays parallel to the ground or in an upright position. Like the lever arm robot, there are ways that you can increase the lifting capacity or the torque of your parallel linkage. You can use multiple servos that are working in unison together. You can use a gear train that amplifies the torque, or you can use a combination of these methods. Another way to increase the lifting capacity of your mechanism is to use passive assistance. Passive assistance, like springs, rubber bands, or counterbalances, help the robot lift the mechanism. This robot is using a parallel linkage to lift a rocket. As the lift arm comes down, the springs expand, but then as it lifts the rocket, the springs retract, helping to pull the arm up. A final example of a lifting mechanism is called an elevator. This robot uses a Tetrix Max rack and pinion linear slide pack to do its lifting. As the pinion gear rotates, it travels along the rack gear, creating a vertical movement. That pinion gear can be driven by a continuous rotation, or CR, servo, or it can be driven by a DC motor, such as a tornado motor. We recommend using limit switches or mechanical stops to keep your pinion gear from traveling off of the rack gear. 
Or if you're using a Tetrix Tornado, you can use the encoders to accomplish the same thing. Whatever method you decide to use for your lifting mechanism, we always encourage you to use the engineering design process to design, build, test, and modify your robot to achieve the best results possible. And as always, remember to have fun, build some robots, and we'll see you next time.